Hey everyone, the name is Rector and this is Marvel. And today we're talking about play, we're talking about actors, we're talking about a particular subtype of people. And I think you've noticed these people, you know. The people who are high on play, the people who can be the best described as actors, they are people that enjoy, you know, letting loose in a situation. There is no right and wrong, there is no good and bad, it's just fun, it's just all information. Play, action, is about intellectually taking control of the situation, of the chaos that is life, and trying to take it, shape it, do something with it that will give you some kind of experience or some kind of information about the situation. Play is uh, best described as motion, action, doing, while evaluation is best described as passive, careful, sometimes almost neurotic. Because while to the actor Everything is just action. Everything is just a myriad, a series of events that somehow connect or disconnect all the time, constantly around us. To the evaluator, to the reviewer subtype, everything is either right or wrong. And there is a fear in this, a paralysis almost, because everything could potentially be wrong. Every action, every step you take needs to be carefully thought out. Before you go to the mall, you have to write a grocery list. Before you go out, you have to think about where you're going and how you're gonna get there. While the actor sees everything as a matter of improvisation or of organization readily, constantly, uh, planning, hosting, putting things together, doing, uh, explaining, expressing, talking. To the reviewer, everything is a matter of discussion or careful decision making and weighing of pros and cons. I could go there, but I could also go there. But maybe that place is better or maybe that is better. And while the evaluator can sometimes get stuck in the process of decision making and of evaluating what is exactly good and what is exactly bad, the actor can get caught in doing crazy stunts without thinking things through. So earlier I was watching a series on the television, a study on the fire festival, you know, the failed party. The party that never happened, the greatest party that never happened. And one of the organizers of this event, uh, well, the actual de facto organizer of this event, he seemed to have almost no compass in his life to bear him or to help him understand his life. Everything was about what he wanted to do. He had his great idea and he just wanted to put it together and he didn't care how he would put that together and he didn't think about the fact that maybe it could eventually go bad maybe it could go wrong maybe there are some steps to be thought of in advance maybe i need to think ahead a bit maybe i need to be a little pragmatic maybe i need to uh, outline my steps and discuss this with other people and see what they think first no he just wanted to do it, and he wanted to do it as fast as possible. He set an impossible deadline of little less than four months because he was so excited about this thought of a party, a festival in the Bahamas. Not thinking about the logistics or the consequences for the thousands of people that came there, he offered all kinds of crazy ideas without a plan for how to put it together. He came up with all kinds of initiatives just because he was so caught in the, up in this process of doing, 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 constantly having something to do, constantly being surrounded by this, you know, yes energy, you know. There was a point where he faced criticism from people in his own project, and often his action would be to fire the people who were critical or skeptical of his ideas. He wanted yes people, yaman, uh, people that would just 
do things and just agree with him and go along with him. People that would also enjoy, you know, just acting or doing and gaining information and trying things out and testing out and experimenting with things. The hope was uh, to that there would always be another idea around the corner, you know, another thing you could try out. If something failed, there would be another solution, another option, another route, and it would all figure itself out. All the disconnected, scrambled uh lost paths all the blocked doors would eventually be unlocked through sheer imagination so the actor types they're fueled by intuition or sensing perceiving or judging they're fueled by this desire to act and to do 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 you know everything is just information and the readily pursuit of new information a constant pursuit of new experiences of Traveling, going to places, trying new things, and then new things, and then new things on top of that. You are so lost in this process. Uh, you know, there is a point where you you bring up, you should at least theoretically bring up uh, a tidal wave. You know, where uh, you know all those doubts that you've been holding back eventually hit you. You know, all those problems eventually come up to hit you in the face. You know. But uh, sometimes those things never come. Sometimes uh, some people are almost incapacitated with the ability to think about what is logical or ethical or what the potential consequences could be. And, you know, being unable to do something psychologically, that's a sign of some kind of cognitive dysfunction. There are people out there that are so caught up in this, you know, uh, sociopaths that uh, are so lost that they cannot, even if they would try, think about a situation carefully. They cannot, even if they would want to, even if they know it's the right thing, they cannot bring themselves to do it. And uh, when you're unable to do something, that's a sign of a disorder. Most of us should be aspiring towards a healthy balance of uh, action and evaluation. Most of us should gather information and should make decisions and set goals and targets in balance with ethical criteria. and we should be reflecting and evaluating and assessing our own actions and behaviors did I do good did I do better this time than last time what could I do better than I did before and we should be doing things. We should be going out and having experiences. We should not get caught in this paralysis uh, known to the evaluator subtypes. So in MTI, there are four subtypes. There is the actor, there is the evaluator, the perceiver, the gatherer, uh, or finally the decider. And everyone tends to fall into one of these four subtypes. And uh, the way to figure out your subtype is think about these actions and activities and think about what problem tends to speak to you the most. If you're an actor, the key problem is you cannot slow yourself down. You constantly have to do something. You're constantly busy with new projects and ideas. You don't have time to sit down and assess your situation or reflect on what you're doing. You don't really know fundamentally what it is you are doing. You just know you have to do it and have to keep doing things. And uh, if you're an actor subtype, you're going to be that person that values play and fun and carefreeness. You're going to be the laugh of every situation, the Fred and George, the one that makes the jokes, the person that says lighten up, the person that says it will work out, the person who always has a new option or alternative, and the person that always has a carefully laid out plan for how to get forward. So that's the actor subtype. I hope this video helped explain the subtype to you. And if you already feel like this is your subtype, feel free to comment down below or stay tuned for my other videos where I will explain about the other three subtypes. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.